Engine mounts look like they haven't fallen out yet. DSG automatic gearbox. Serious. History of Mike's wiring loom. Some fuck has nicked his steering wheel. The 1.6 Eco Boost. like a little slip road that goes up to another pad. Stefan Muller has finally made it Hello. over to over to England and he's brought with him some toys. Uh, Monsters, look at those tyres. But I don't know if the, uh, there was a first magazine, but it was without the airbrush. Oh really? I love looking at these old German mags. Are these, these are all German, aren't they? Yeah. Look at this, SAF Sierra on crazy PLS split rims with a naturally aspirated YB engine in it. So I've uh, given a quick paint strip. Um, they need a good polish up. I'm probably gonna split them all apart because um, some of the dishes need a bit of repair work. But yeah, I've got to try them back on the car just to see what they look like with the nice shiny silvery front to them because I think that's the route I'm gonna go. Either that or I'm gonna go body color. Another day, another video, we're at Silverstone and we're about six hours late because, long story short, we woke up at six and we drove all the way up to Birmingham and I bought a five pot S-Max uh, and drove it pretty much to about seven minutes over there and it developed a rather annoying death knock. So I had to call the AA. He came out and we managed to tow it back up to Birmingham and I managed to get my money back and now we've come all the way back down to Silverstone just in time hopefully for the last race. Gonna go and find MTS Chris, see the escort. He's had a load of work done on it. Hopefully we can see some race cars and briefly see a race is the plan. So let's go and have a look around. Engine mounts look like they haven't fallen out yet, so that's all good. Inters on at the minute. What do you reckon? Haven't put the two yeah, bolts in yet. <laughs> that's, that void's all yeah, warranted. Okay, right. you seen them? Two oh, bolts I'll leave it. Made. Listen, I'll get that done next week. You're only relying on two to M10s on the side. God. I should put cable. Three hundred dollars <laughs> power. Holding on by two bolts.
just heading down to the assembly point. It's just started to rain a bit, so everyone's kind of, well, most people are on slicks. Uh, managed to get a couple of GoPros in Chris's car, so hopefully we can finally see, yeah, the sequential gearbox working properly under power and my gearbox mounts and engine mounts uh, holding steady is the plan. So we're gonna try and get down to the assembly point and uh, yeah, basically switch on the GoPros and go and watch the racing. set up and cut um, this chassis. It's got a rebate in there for the, for the beer crate to sit in. And yeah, we just um, ran the machine up, hogged it all down, cut it all out. Uh, also laser cut some front plates where I've hacked the front of the frame off. So I've welded these little uh, winglets on and they'll bolt through the box and into the wood, tying the metal chassis to everything else. been busy at work. Basically, I've given the chassis a good stain and a clear coat lacquer. Uh, I've mounted all the pedal. It's got upholstery Steve sorted me out with a leather uh, cushion, which re retracts back. We've still got space for four uh, beer bottles in there. Little Sam turned a beer pump handle on his wood lathe, uh, and I've put a gold Bitburger logo on it and a little clear lacquer for the handbrake. And we've got some new fancy pants casters on the back which make it a hell of a lot better because the old casters we had on it were falling apart. D-Watt battery still, give it all a nice fresh lick of paint, got rid of the red bits and now it's ready to, ready to have a test drive and we've got some big empty industrial units at work uh, and it would be rude not to yeah, have a good old tear up and uh, see how this thing performs. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I've even installed some headlights. Sadiq Khan doesn't like my 330D anymore. Uh, this has been a brilliant daily. I've had it for like five years now. Uh, yeah, unfortunately now's the time I've got to sell this on and I need to get something that's ULES compliant. Don't start me on that. But yeah, basically looking for something Ford and looking for something with a turbo and five cylinders. Let's go see what I've signed up to. So, 
this is it. This is the new S Max daily. So I've been after one for a while. 2.5T, so the Volvo five cylinder engine. So it sounds good. It goes goes all right, and it's it's really good on fuel. This has got a full stainless steel exhaust on it, which uh, sounds jokes. Sounds like an Audi Quattro. up with him I can show him the new whip oh yeah hey, it's got a carbon <laughs> bonnet on it <laughs> genuine vinyl carbon bonnet how have you not taken that off yet I don't know you said it's pretty bad underneath so oh, I might really? have to get some paint and try and have a go at painting it but yeah big yeah, boy man. engine does sound good for a people carrier yeah this is where Zach like pulls it apart oh uh, looks all right got the HIDs are they proper ones or are they oh, no, no they're like down shot ones <laughs> <laughs> like the ones you had in the uh, Fiesta head. It's best thing you do with them to be fair, just put them straight in the bin. To get some decent bowl. No, I'm happy with it. Seems to be alright. So I've done like 29 miles to the gallon on the way down. Which is meant for a big old bus. Petrol. T5, eh? Yeah, that's to pretty be good. Fair, pretty reasonable. A mess in here. Back in the uh, Zoo Speed HQ. And he's got a very special car down at the moment, which is Clark from Ignition Advantages, the guy who I bought my Max ECU off. And is his monster drag car. It's going all out. He's got um, DSG automatic gearbox going in on a crazy adapter plate. The thing about all of this work that he's had done is the little, uh, oh, I don't know if you can see it, the little bead rod willy. Nice touch. Oh, yeah. Have you not seen that yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and this is a serious yeah. car, and it's going to be even more serious when it's all back up and yeah, running. Zach's sex swing. So this is a Max ECU, the race version. So you get a lot of added extras, inputs, outputs. I can't even remember. We'll listen Heaps to Heaps of stuff. Yeah. Do eight cylinders, fully sequential with eight EGTs. So that's the EGT loop and that's got the knock sensor in it. And just loads of other inputs and outputs. Of inputs and, and, outputs. Yeah. and then this is the main loom, which we're going to be starting to play around with today. And you've got the, the unit itself is a really nice, I don't know what it is, like cast aluminium? Feels presumably. Feels metal, solid, heavy, good, reliable. It comes with a really neat wiring diagram, with all the pins in and out, and that's for the other plug with a knock sensor. Very and all the, um, it's got the e-throttle stuff as well. Oh yeah, so you can run a, not that I'm gonna be running an e-throttle, but Zach runs a Porsche electronic fly-by-wire throttle body. And One day, I'm gonna convince you to run e-throttle. Yeah, we'll see, one, one step at a time. Right, get, right. Ray, get off, get off. And you can run up to eight cylinders on this, can't you? Yeah, fully sequential. All eight injectors. We, um, haven't, made, we haven't made my other uh, inlet, shall we put eight injectors <laughs> in it? Can you do, you know how you'd have like four injectors running normally and then four staged, staged injectors? Yeah, you yeah, do yeah, that on this? yeah, of course you can. Oh, but well, you can do everything for all these. The these are like, the, I think they're the best ECU in the price range. I don't think you can beat value for money when it comes to the max race. You know, most normal people, you know, there's always way overkill for what we're doing. Yeah. Even me, I'm not, I'm using, the only reason I wanted a race is because I needed so many inputs to run the um, cruise control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much all the loom as far as we can get in terms of bunching off all of the bits. This is all redundant at the moment, but we've got, I don't even know what I'm looking at now. Uh, <laughs> you got like, uh, I think that's shift light and that's a uh, boost controller. So each, each bit we can work out and then offer it all up in the car and then we can what, start cutting it back to where it needs to go. And then we can sleeve it and put the ends on it, I assume, simple as that. <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> and 
and start it again. Another day, another video. Ventured up to Santa Pod. We've, um, we've got Lawrence and Cy, and uh, Lawrence has brought his K20 Turbo Mark II Escort. It's back up and running, and he plans to yeah, send it today. Slept in the S Max because it was too windy last night. Apologies for the audio because it's going to be a really windy day. It was way too windy last night for a tent, so airbed in the back of the S Max, and it's uh, pretty luxurious. Just watching the cars roll in. Grab some. That's pretty serious. Uh, yeah, watch the cars come in and then we're going to take a look around the show, watch the drag racing, watch Lawrence hopefully not break his escort. Weather's not too bad, hopefully it holds out, doesn't rain too much. It's definitely going to be windy. <laughs> wow, careful, there's a We're just going to watch some of the cars roll in and uh, have some breakfast and then we'll have a look around the show. to see this is Kev's rear wheel drive cosy powered mental fiesta and I'll be a minute to see it. He's only just had it got it up and running but look at that. Serious. It's like it's been stretched quite a lot like the front there. Oh, I still got the side valve engine in it. <laughs> mate. Steve Morris mate. Hot dog look at that. The size of that pipe. That's the size That's of that turbo. Speed, that is. That's like the Peter's motor isn't it? Look at the size of the wastegate. When the wastegate is bigger than like my turbo. So Loz has managed to get the car back up and running. It's been a long time coming. You've had some right nightmares. Like, how many gearboxes have you got through now? Three. Three super gearboxes. Two, uh, diffs. two diffs. Three clutches. Three clutches. And now, hopefully, you're in a winning combo because you've gone and bought a, I don't even know what gearbox is. Magnum. Magnum. Six speed. Men to be bomb proof, so we shall see. But we're gonna hopefully get it on like, they've got like an autocross track thing. So yeah, Lawrence has got some old Hoosier slicks on the back from like a national hot rod car. And he's just gonna hopefully send it, not break it is the plan, should be good. Video. Welcome back to the channel. In the previous video you'd have seen me heading down to Zach and making a start on my new engine loom. In this video we're going to basically be carrying on with the engine loom, installing a Max Race ECU into Project Compo and hopefully getting it up and running and yeah getting it mapped out on the road. We've literally got two days to get this done. Zach's coming up, he's going to stay overnight and um, we're just going to just hit it hard and see if we can get this all sorted. Zach's turned up, but basically I've drilled a hole in the, in the bonnet, in the bonnet, in the bulkhead for the grommet. We push through all the wiring, and we're just working out the route that it's all going to take, bunching it all up, 
with Ghetto Man at the ECU for the time being, uh, just to get it in and on. And I've bolted up the relays on the left hand side over there. I don't know if you can see it. So this should get us hopefully, this should get us hopefully up and running. But depending on how time goes, it'd be nice to start cutting it back take it off we need to put another couple of wires in then probably refit it again make sure it's all in make the right sure place, it's all yeah. in the right place and then take it back out then heat shrink it and then put it back in then take it back out because we've probably got something wrong yeah yeah it's Hopefully quite it's working. quite involved but yeah we basically got what a couple of days on this yeah. to try and get it in wired running and if the web is good enough i'd like to get it live mapped somehow so yeah the dashboard is a work in progress i've already hacked down the bottom half of it I've taken off the glove box. I just want to kind of have a simple one bezel and a little ledge, and then we're going to try and put the ECU up underneath it. Uh, maybe a couple of switches. I only really need now the hazard switch and the blower switch, and maybe a, a socket for a, a cigarette lighter. But everything else is now all going to be controlled through the ECU. So my big bank of old rocker switches is, um, yeah, in the box. Finally, obsolete. Yeah, is in the box of all the other stuff. Okay, so Barton's turned up and he's just helping take some craziness out of my car loom. I've just pulled out all the old all the old fuel pump wiring and then we're just running the new wires from the, the new fuse box. So we've got three wires here, one's for the fans, one's for the charge cooler pump, one's for the fuel pump. So it should be a lot neater. Mystery of Mike's wiring loom. <laughs> Yeah, I can see the black smoke coming out the side. That feels like race car. <laughs> yeah, does that smell like race car? I can feel it. Smells good. Yeah. If we don't break down, we've made an improvement. <laughs> There's still areas to uh, finalise and finish. Yeah. Certainly, uh, the dash is looking a lot worse off than I thought it would. <laughs> It had a couple of like burps and hesitations and it's thrown up a couple of error codes. But apart from that, it's all good. It drove really good considering. Yeah, yeah, really well, well, I'm really happy with it, yeah. I think, yeah, a couple of hopefully new crank and can sensors and hopefully that'll be the end of our trigger issues. And Then we can sort out good. tidying up the, uh, the dash. In the meantime, I did drive it over to Tom Barkley at Tom Barkley Racing. If you haven't seen one of my previous videos where I go over to his workshops, he does some amazing work on classic Jags, building race engines, He's got a dyno down there. Whilst he was running up the dyno, he let me use the ramp and Barton as well popped over. And I managed to finally put a new timing belt and timing kit on the engine. I'll be meaning to put a timing belt on it for a long time. I also, uh, with the help of the boys, we <laughs> dropped the oil out of it, um, made a bit of a mess. Oh mate, I don't know how much fuel's in it. It's gonna fill this tray up pretty quick. Put some fresh oil in it and a fresh filter. So we are now good to go. All that's left to do is yeah basically work out what i'm doing with this dashboard i think that's going to involve me playing with the toys i've got at work
Right, well, there you have it. The dash is in, the ECU is in, it's all wired up, it's all running. Well happy with it. I've got to say a huge thanks to Zach for spending two, it's more like three days with me on this. A bit of a long three days, but we got there in the end. I'm well impressed that we managed to get it all sorted. Huge thanks to Clark as well for his support and helping out with all the sensors and selling me the ECU. Classic Ford stand, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna go and see if we find Lauren. Right, so I met up with Lawrence, and he camped over last night, and some fuck has nicked his steering wheel. So I'm pretty sure mine's got the same type of boss. He's got track time today, so. He's going to need a steering wheel, so I'm going to loan him my steering wheel for the day. Oh, mate. Although, my, I put my uh, flat at the bottom. I think that's on. I think you're good to go. In this country, cool. it's but, no, but in like New Zealand and stuff, people are like, like this is 300 at the wheel, and that's tame really. Like people in New Zealand and stuff are like 16 psi, 400 at the wheel, quite happily tracking them. There is. I'm sure there. it's just all about having a map, right? Having yeah. a setup properly. And, like, I could have gone most of the time. Isn't I could have gone for more. It's like this is only at 10 psi, but I had intake temps and there's no airflow to the in the corner or anything. So now. I've got water methanol, so now I can go more if I want to, but at the moment don't need it. Like, it's more than fun as imagine. it is now, so... That's the thing, isn't it? It's just that balance of, like, yeah. having... Because it is pretty much bang on a ton. Yeah. Like, before it was turboed, it was, like, 980, I think it was, kilos. So, with the turbo kit, it's probably just, maybe, like, just over or around a ton, so... On, on this, there is no front subframe, it's still... So, you know, it's not like you're running an Escort cross-member no, no, steering no. rack? Steering rack comes off the cage, yeah. uh, Sierra rack. Um, Is it Sierra legs as well on the front? Sierra hubs, custom lower arms, custom anti-roll bar. Still escort, gas coilovers, and then the rear end's complete RX-8 subframe. I think the Ford boys need to step up the mark.
I was just curious, what obviously it's an XE lump in it. Yeah. Is it all marked to escort front yeah. legs, cross member, rack, it, yeah. column, and then you got sequential. Well, columns made up bit. Yeah. It's, it's in. Can I open it? <laughs> and then you got a sequential quake in it. Yeah. And then what's the back axle? Like four yeah. links, five links? Yeah, five links for the Mustang. Oh, really? What, yeah. like nine inches? Yeah. That? Yeah. Proper. Skirt big thing in it. <laughs> but, uh, it's, got, um, it's got LSD in it, but it keeps breaking LSD, so. So, what you've done is welded it up. Well, it's just got like a. Yeah. Spool. They do a spool, yeah, yeah, wicked. This is proper. In Florida at the moment, with Richard, got a Mustang, and we're going to cruise over to Bradenton to go and check out Cletus's Freedom Factory, is the plan. Made it. Lots of straight roads. Drag strips over there. And freedom factories over there. Chicken strips and chips. The men do. Uh, so we want to talk about quick, fast, fast, fast track. And watch them racing. Cleat is in the Porsche. Crown Vicks they got over there. That's James's uh, burnout truck. Just had a little chat with Cletus, said hi, said we were from London. He said appreciate you coming down. Now we're gonna watch him drifting, I think. Here's Access Aware is here, which is the side. Original like 
magnesium scented BBS and some of these like they're exactly the same spec as the original cars used to have yeah but they are um, a, a brand new wheel uh, center lock correct uh, alloy upright uh, you know it hasn't got it hasn't got like adapters or anything no, like no, that no. it's, 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 it's proper it be, yeah, yeah 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 how you doing hey. so it was a 2.6 was it Smith and Jones yep that's gone still got the sequential box and it's been replaced with a 1.6 EcoBoost. EcoBoost. And this thing has been played around with. Yeah. It's got a tubular manifold, bigger turbo on it. No, that's just like the road going upgrade for Fiesta. I uh, take it's all been lined and pistons and bits and bobs in it. Yeah, li liner block, closed deck. Fits in there really nicely. So this is your second outing in it. Yes. And it's made, just because there's going to be a lot of people asking why you've done that, aside from the fact that this is a cheaper way of making more power. It makes similar power to the, the, the big normally aspirated engines. What's the power delivery like? The torque delivery? It's a bit too fierce to start with, <laughs> so we've, we've backed off the boost lower down. Pulled some power out of it. Yeah, right it's st I'm still trying to get it right for the car, and it's, it's better, definitely better. So that's another year over. It's been an absolute blast. Once again, I want to say thanks to Zach and Clark for all their help with the ECU. Barton for coming over and lending a hand on the wiring and doing, helping me out with the timing belt. And Tom Barkley from Tom Barkley Racing for lending me the ramp. I'm going to try and get down there a bit more next year. I want to show you his crazy engine dyno rig that he's got. Um, which will make for a brilliant video. Again, another big thanks to all of the Modified Ford boys for inviting me along and being a part of that. It's been an absolute blast each race event that I go to. Makes me want to go and get my own race license and turn this into a proper outright race car, but for the time being, um, I have got some big plans next year, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification button because, yeah, so the plan is, I'm going to sort out the garage properly. We're looking to screed the floor. The wiring that I said to Ryan, I will actually get around to that. I need to redo the roof and I'm going to be making it work all cupboards and high level cupboards with a workbench. I'm going to unpack the Artec TIG welder, start fabricating in my own garage again. I've got my billet, billet collector and my GTX 28 on my mock-up engine. So I'm going to be making a rear wheel drive exhaust manifold with external wastegate. Yeah, I've got engine mounts cut. Uh, that's alternator bracket cut and a tensioner. So that one needs TIG welding up. Started making my um, stainless steel flared outlet for the downpipe. Gonna need to tap up Dave at Retro Ford for one of his cast rear wheel drive sumps and uh, see if I can get Ike Engineering to sort me out one of their water rails. And then I'll be tapping up motorsport tools for all the other link boxes and turrets and stuff. I have made some cheeky cover plates for my engine at work and I'll show you that in another video and I have started buying some real drive bits that's a narrow atlas axle for three litre capri so whether that ends up on this or on that we shall see I'm gonna get this up and running get this through an MOT start cruising this to work I've got some funky wheels gonna lower it also in a couple of days I'm gonna go and catch up with Adam Barton we're gonna crack on with a jelly sided drift car and finish off our lock mods and next year definitely gonna get it back out to play and uh, go do some skids with it, is the plan. There's lots to do, so as I said, subscribe to the channel. Merry Christmas, hope you had a great one. And yeah, roll on the shows next year. We'll get some track time with this whilst it's front wheel drive, and then start collecting all the bits to convert it to rear wheel drive. And I'll do a whole video on uh, my thought process on how I'm gonna do that, and whether we do it to this or to that. Also wanna get the Anglia back over, sort the radiator out, and get that um, up and running again. So let's roll on 2024, happy new year, and I'll see you I'll see you on the next video. Take care.